In this video, I want to show you how you can create a simple calendar using the default matrix table in Power BI. We're going to go through how you can integrate your own data and filter them using slicers and also how you can customize and change or add colors to the different dates depending on the event type. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So before we start I just want to give credit to Chandeep over at the Goodly channel because this solution is his and you know that I'm a big fan of his. I cover him in a lot of my recommendation videos and if you haven't followed him just make sure you follow him because he has a lot of really cool tips and tricks. When it comes to Power BI or Excel. So to start this demo, let's go through first of all the model that I've created here today, which is actually pretty simple in the grand scheme of things. So here we have a few different tables here. The two main important ones are the calendar table, which uh, if I just show you is just a list of all the different dates that we could potentially have in our data model. We have a few columns here that we will use for our matrix. So the important ones would be the date, the year, the month, as well as the day of week or the day of week name. So we're going to use it to obviously display the, uh, the calendar view on the, on the column headers. And then we have another table here, which I've created called events. So this is just is a list of the different events that we might want to highlight in this calendar. So it might be different types of bank holidays. So I've put all of the bank holidays that we have available here in the UK, because you might want to visualize that. Along with that, I've also added a few different events here for specific projects. So, you know, scoping out the project, creating a budget, all of these things. This is just an example. And what I've done is I've created different types. We have two different projects here, the Northwind project and the AI labs project. So they are similar in terms of their structure, but it's just that, you know, like they have their own kind of schedule and they are created or done in different orders or maybe in different durations. And we want to give the users the ability to kind of see this in a singular calendar view or give them the ability to filter to only look at certain elements, maybe just look at a specific project or maybe just look at a specific year or specific month. That's what we're going to enable today using the matrix visual. So the first few things that we need to do is we need to just check the model view first here. Just make sure that there is a relationship between the calendar and the events table. So I'm just going to drag here and just create that, that relationship. So now we can use these two tables together in the same visual. So from the report view, we're going to select the matrix visual here, just make it uh, slightly bigger. And then from here, we're going to add a few things. So on the row, we are going to add the uh, under calendar, we're going to add the week. So as you can see, it just gives us an ascending view of the week of year. And then we're just going to rename this one week. And then under the columns, we're just going to simply add the day of week name. So it will give us from Monday to Sunday. Now it's not really sorted. And that's because it's sorting alphabetically. So if we want to just make sure that that's sorting from Monday to Sunday, let's just go back to the calendar go to day of week name. And I believe just so that it's easier to see, I'm gonna go back to the calendar here. So day of week name, we're going to use the day of week column as a means to sort this in the right order. So zero starting on a Monday, and then six ending on a Sunday. So with the day of week name highlighted, select sort by column, sort it by day of week. And now if we go back to the column view, that should now sort it by Monday to Sunday. So the next thing that we need to do here is to add the values here, which we for this one, we need to add the label. So the day as well as whatever events that is happening on that day. But before we do that, let's start doing that now. So let's create a new measure. And we're going to call this one calendar label just to keep things simple. So I'm going to first start by getting the current day in context. So to do this, we're just going to 
wrap the calendar day under uh, within the max function. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a unichar here, a unichar 10, which gives you a line break to give you a space. It just basically goes to the next line. And we're going to do this twice just to give space in between the day. So we'll give two lines of space between the day as well as the kind of event description. So we're going to use the function repeat. And then we're going to say, give me two lines right here. And then the next thing that we want to do is to add the event name itself. Now, there might be some instances where you have multiple events happening in the same day. So we want to make sure that we are representing or we're showing both of them when we are showing the label. So what we're going to do is we're going to use concatenate X, which lets us kind of repeat through all of these and basically combine them into a single string. So I'm going to give it the events table and the expression that we want is the events name and then the delimiter or the separator that will separate these values would be a comma like this and that's it so if we hit enter and let's just drag that into our table here so it looks like there is uh, some issues here especially with the totals but i think we've done the right thing so let's uh, start first by removing the totals just to so that we can fix this view the second thing is that we might need to work on the formatting to make this look more like a calendar. There are lots of ways that you can format this table to make it look like a calendar. So let me just show you a few things that you can do to make it kind of look like a calendar. So the first thing is to just resize all of this width because it took the width of all of the totals. So it's kind of out of whack at the moment. So we're just going to make sure they are roughly the same width like this Here we go. And another thing that you might want to do with this matrix is to maybe decrease the size of the values inside the actual dates themselves. So if we reduce the value, you will see that it is a little bit easier to kind of read. Another thing is maybe you might want to add a month to show or to, you know, to visualize in this table, which month you're looking at. So you might want to add, let's say a month from the calendar like this, I uh, will put it at the top here so that if you expand that to one level and maybe disable the stepped layout here, you can have the months. Now the months are not sorting automatically. So we just change that sorting by the month sort just so that it's sorting in the right order. And then I think another thing that you can just make sure that is disabled is the auto width. So this is what kind of changes the width of the different columns that you have, depending on the data that you have in them or what you're showing in them. So just, just make sure that when you drag these columns in is that they stay in that in that same width that you've dragged them into. And then another thing that you might want to think about is just to make sure that you're always showing the, the columns and the rows, even if there's no data in them. Now, because of how we've set this up, that shouldn't really be a problem. However, you might encounter in some cases where if there is no data on a Tuesday, it won't show that that column, which uh, we, we should or we want to always make sure that it's always showing even if there's no data in that Tuesday. So to just make sure that that doesn't happen, we just right click on these values in our wells and just enable show items with no data. Right click here as well. And uh, there we go. I think you're pretty much set. There are a few other things that you can add here like filters, but yeah, that lets you kind of customize the view of this calendar even more. So let's say we want to add a year filter on the left hand side. Let's change that into a filter. Just make it into a tile. Or maybe just a vertical just to keep it simple. So let your users choose specific years or even months if you wanted to. 
and then another one might be if you wanted to add a filter by the event type which we've created already before right so um so under events, if you choose a different type here, so if you want to see, let's say the bank holidays, you will see that the table or the matrix or the calendar adjusts automatically. So it only is showing you those events and where they exist in the calendar. Now, looking at this sort of calendar view, it's still a little bit difficult to see where things are happening. So you might want to add some colors to kind of highlight when the events are happening. And we can do that quite easily using a bit of DAX. So let me show you. So I'm gonna just disable the selections that I've made here. Let's create a new measure here. I'm gonna call this one day color. And we're going to create a simple switch here. We're going to take and just get one event type from that uh, day. Now you might want to choose a different color if there are multiple events types in the same day. But in this case, I'm not too bothered. I just want to add some sort of coloring or just take one value from that day if there are multiple events in that same day. So let's say if it's a bank holiday, you want to show it as gray. If it's Northwind project, then we want to show it as green. If it's AI labs, we want to show it as orange. Otherwise, we want to show it as white. Now we just wrote the colors in kind of text form. However, you can change that or use something more specific by adding the hex code, which will do the same thing, but obviously a bit more precise than just these colors that I've set here. But anyway, now that you've set the day color DAX measure here, let's go back to the matrix here. And then under cell elements, you want to go to the background color and change that format style based on the field value. The field value needs to be the day color. And there you go. So you now have the ability to see those different event types where they fall into the calendar. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to create a simple calendar view using the default matrix visual in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.